We're about uh, 17 seconds away from web separation. Séparation Web Space Telescope. Go Web! We do have confirmation of observatory separation. The James Webb Space Telescope amidst applause here in the Control Center, now taking its first steps in pursuit.
standing by for terminal count. À tout de DDO, attention pour les deux comptes final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unité, top. And we have engine start. And lift off. Décollage. Décollage, lift off from a tropical rainforest to the edge of time itself. James Webb begins a voyage back to the birth of the universe. Punching a hole through the clouds, 20 seconds into the flight, good pitch program reported. Vehicle performance is nominal. The Ariane 5 rocket continues uh, to fly uphill in nominal fashion. The rumble of the powerful Ariane 5 now being felt here in the control center. 3D animation. Thirteen kilometers in altitude, seven kilometers downrange, traveling uh, about uh, 0.6 kilometers per second. The trajectory reported to be nominal by Jean-Luc Voyer, the uh, range operations manager. You can see at the bottom of your screen the yellow line is the trajectory plot, perfectly overlaid over the green line, which is the pre-launch trajectory. One minute, 41 seconds into the flight, about 40 seconds away from shutdown of the solid rocket boosters. Coming up on the two minute mark into the flight. When it detects the threshold of acceleration, the dis not the deceleration, but uh, less acceleration for the Everything is okay. Everything is normal. Two minutes, 15 seconds into the flight. When the computer detects this threshold, it will separate. Separation des EAP. Done. We have confirmation of solid rocket booster separation from Jean-Luc Voyer. This coming at an altitude of 44 miles. The Ariane 5 and James Webb traveling almost 5,000 miles an hour. We have about one minute, five seconds to go before fairing jettison. That'll be the next critical milestone. The fairing is there to avoid the satellite being exposed to high temperatures and also high air flows. And as soon as the launcher leaves the atmosphere, as is now the case, the satellite does not need anymore to be protected and the web does not need anymore to be protected. So each kilogram being very important for the performance of the launch, we are going to eject this no more useful fairing. And let's go down to the floor uh, in the Jupiter Control Center to Raphael Chevrier of Ariane Space. Raphael, so far so good. Hi Rob, so far so good. Everything is nominal as uh, we say when attitude and trajectory of the Ariane 5 is going perfectly well. As you can see also on the yellow line, de la coiffe. on the screen, we had the confirmation of the uh, separation of the two sail coasters and now of the ferry, meaning that we have crossed the limits of the atmosphere. So everything is good. Super good. And the DDO just said that all parameters are going perfectly, perfectly smoothly. So let's continue the mission. And Raphael, uh, this is a view uh, from the upper stage camera called the Vicky Cam. Looking back at the James Webb Space Telescope, this is on about a 20 second delay or so because of the way the imagery is processed uh, here in the control room. There's your telescope ready to unfurl uh, its uh, wings basically and begin uh, its uh, journey to a, the Lagrange point, the L2 point, about a million miles away from Earth. The trajectory is nominal, the report from Jean-Luc Voyer. The 
liftoff time confirmed here in the Mission Control Center at 12.20 Greenwich Mean Time, 9.20 a.m. Peru Time, 7.20 a.m. Eastern Time. The Ariane 5 and James Webb, 181 uh, kilometers in altitude, 450 kilometers downrange from the launch site here in Peru. Five minutes, 12 seconds into the flight. We have about uh, three and a half minutes to go in uh, main stage or first stage uh, performance. And again, you can see at the bottom of your screen the uh, yellow uh, plot line overlaid over the green line, meaning uh, we are right on course, right down the pike on a perfect trajectory so far for the Ariane 5 rocket. by the Gagnon tracking station, which is, which is close to here, where we are in Kourou. It will track the launcher and the ignition of its upper stage. And then we'll, we'll have the natal station in Brazil, ascension in the, as you can see on the map, in the middle of the ocean, and the two last stations in Africa. Libreville and Malindi, one on the east coast, the other one on the west coast. And the one on the west coast, Malindi, you can see that the satellite will be, the telescope will be separated more, over, more or less over this Malindi station. And this Malindi station will also acquire the telemetry data from the telescope. You can see both are green, Galio and data on this animation. It means they are expected to receive the, da the data and it was confirmed right now by the launch Operations manager. Addition de la télémesure par la station du Natal au Brésil. We're just confirming now that telemetry is being processed uh, through the Brazilian tracking station. The telescope is also uh, processing telemetry through the tracking and data relay satellite system. As it uh, moves further and further out into deep space, all of the telescope's uh, telemetry and its imagery ultimately will be processed through the deep space network in Goldstone, California past the seven minute mark into the flight. A perfect ride to, so far on the Ariane 5. We have about uh, one and a half minutes to go in the first stage performance. Once uh, the main stage uh, engine is commanded to cut off, it will be uh, jettisoned. And just a few seconds after that, the upper stage engine will, will ignite and it uh, will be the workhorse for a 16 minute burn that will put uh, James Webb into its preliminary orbit. About 11 minutes from now, uh, telescope controllers at uh, the Space Telescope Science Institute will be sending commands to prepare James Webb for the initial uh, series of commissioning activities uh, that will lead to, to the deployment of its solar array and uh, the initiation of generation of electrical power for the telescope. About 30 seconds away from main engine cutoff, Trajectory normal. Nominal trajectory continues uh, to be the watchword for the day from the range operations manager, Jean-Luc Voyer, as we stand by for main engine shutdown and separation. Extinction de l'EPC. And we have main stage shutdown and separation confirmed here on the Mission Control Center and the ignition of that upper stage. BSC. And Raphael Chevrier down uh, in the fishbowl. Uh, so far, so good. Yes, Rob, we have the confirmation of the separation of the main stage and the ignition the of the upper stage. The trajectory is perfectly nominal. This is a very important moment for us because it's always a, uh, a challenge to switch on a cryogenic engine in space condition and we are now at 220 kilometers of altitude. Speed is a bit more than 7 kilometers per second as we enter now the second stage of uh, the second uh, phase uh, of uh, the flight. 
the upper stage is going to power for Hello, about guys. for about 16 minutes to place wave on its transfer orbit and right now everything is again nominal as the video just said. And a short time from now, uh, the uh, so-called sawtooth maneuver uh, will get underway. That again, uh, like rocking a baby in a cradle, this will be a maneuver to keep Webb's optics protected from overheating loose. You can see here Webb attached on top of Ariane 5 upper stage with a very specific configuration. Of course, it will be different uh, during its lifetime, but for the time being, it's uh, it's it's sanctioned is folded and not yet fully protected in the observatory. A number of uh, exhaustive studies have been performed by the mission teams in, in Europe, in the US, on the thermal conditioning inside the telescope and the way the rays of the sun would propagate and interact with sensitive equipment inside the telescope. The maintain this thermal conditioning is really key before separating this, uh, this telescope. And in particular, we know that one face of the telescope cannot face the sun. That's why the, and to produce these right thermal conditions inside the web, a specific roll low has been designed, what we call the SOTUS approach. And if you are, if you are watching carefully to these images, La you can see this animation, nominal. you can see that the upper stage is going 30 degrees on one side, then 30 degrees on the other side, going back and forth this way to, to maintain this uh, perfect thermal conditioning for the, for the telescope. It's uh, worthwhile noting that uh, after Webb separates from the upper stage uh, of the Ariane 5 rocket, which continues to perform in excellent fashion, and coming up on the 12 minute mark into the flight, uh, the telescope controllers uh, will be taking the baton, if you will, from the mission controllers here in Peru. Uh, the first steps will be the opening of fuel valves, a pair of fuel valves, to start flowing fuel to Webb's onboard thrusters. Uh, they then will power on the valve drive electronics. Uh, those are powered on in preparation to control and fire those thrusters when required. Webb's solar array is scheduled to be deployed at approximately the 33 minute mark into the flight. Once it is locked in place, we'll get the call uh, that uh, electricity is flowing through the array. That call uh, will come from the mission operations manager, Carl Starr, who is at the uh, Space Telescope Science Institute at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. Uh, seated right behind him in that control room is Alicia Starr, uh, a pair of stars uh, helping to guide uh, James Webb on its discovery of the stars. Alicia Starr is the uh, lead uh, engineer for launch and ascent events. Uh, once the solar array is deployed and declared power positive, uh, then a uh, three out of the four hold downs for the aft deployed radiator will be released to prevent binding due to the cool down of the telescope's composite structure. The contamination control heaters will be enabled to protect instrument optics on web from any water ice condensation as they cool down. The actuator drive unit will be powered on. This particular mechanism helps with heater La control of fine stirring preventing water ice con uh, condensation later to be used uh, to position each of the mirror's segments. All six reaction wheels and the wheel drive electronics will be powered on for web, and that will be the precursor to the attitude control system using those reaction wheels to maintain the proper orientation with the sun as opposed to using onboard thrusters. Uh, of course, fuel uh, in those thrusters, very valuable. It's a, a limited commodity for the lifetime of James Webb's uh, observations of the universe. We're 13 minutes, 55 seconds into the flight. Jean-Luc uh, Boyer, the uh, range operations manager, continues to report a nominal performance for James Webb. And again, uh, Luis Fabregat from the European Space Agency. Uh, how is this uh, trajectory uh, being uh, carefully and methodically adjusted uh, to provide the uh, correct parameters uh, in the final stages of ASCENT? Yes, Rob, as you can see on this plot, 
the, the altitude is slightly going down. It's perfectly normal. The launch vehicle is uh, really on the, on the line where it should be. This decrease of its altitude, slight decrease of its altitude, will allow the launcher to benefit and the upper stage to benefit of the gravity effect and to increase its velocity until it reaches the thermal threshold. It's about to reach it or even already reached, reached it now and it will go up and now it will go up and up, up to the separation of the Webb telescope. It will separate the Webb telescope on a highly elliptic orbit, but still around the Earth. The satellite, the telescope will be released, inserted on an orbit around the Earth with an apogee, a very high apogee, above uh, 1 million kilometers. Trajectory uh, nominal is reported by Jean-Luc uh, Voyer. You see him in that uh, view, 185 kilometers in altitude. Uh, some 4,500 kilometers downrange from the launch site here in Kourou, moving at uh, more than uh, 8 kilometers per second, uh, right on the plot, right on the trajectory, everything looking great. We are, are about uh, 9 minutes away from the completion of upper stage ignition, its shutdown, and then about a 2 and a half minute the coast phase down. before Webb will separate, observatory separation will be called out. We'll be hearing uh, those calls and the initial calls uh, from Carl Starr, the mission operations manager at the Space Telescope Science Institute at Johns Hopkins through solar array deploy and the declaration of a power positive spacecraft. Uh, you know, James Webb, of course, will be traveling well beyond the moon uh, to a distance of about a million miles away from Earth, settling into a highly elliptical halo-like orbit to begin its astronomical observations. And again, as we mentioned earlier, at the time of observatory separation, Webb will be at an altitude of approximately 864 miles, statute miles, traveling some 21,000 miles uh, an hour. Away from upper stage uh, shutdown. The uh, stage has performed uh, as planned. No issues reported. Uh, the launch occurring at 1220 Greenwich Mean Time, 920 Karoo Time, 720 AM Eastern Time on this Christmas Day. Very the velocity you just mentioned is very important, Rob. The velocity you just mentioned at separation of the telescope is very important. It will be slightly below, okay, I give it in a kilometer per second, but it will be slightly below 10 kilometer per second because it's important that the satellite, the telescope, is not inserted on an escape orbit. It will be placed on a terrestrial orbit so that there will be time for the layout, for, for the early phase operations on the, and the commissioning of the telescope and that will be in fact the upper stage that will leave this orbit and goes toward an escape liberation orbit and of course even uh, though we're still in powered flight the uh, trajectory the acceleration the speed at which James Webb is going towards its preliminary orbit all modeled in advanced uh, in advance and uh, carefully choreographed to maintain as a quiescent an atmosphere and environment around the telescope uh, for its ultimate separation from the upper stage of the Ariane 5 rocket, which is about uh, six and a half minutes from now. Eighteen and a half minutes into the flight. It's very quiet now here in the uh, control center here in Karoo. NASA officials, European Space Agency officials, Ariane Spas officials, all watching uh, telemetry very carefully. And as uh, the upper stage uh, continues to burn uh, nominally and sheds fuel, uh, the acceleration uphill uh, for the James Webb Space Telescope continues to increase as we approach the 20-minute mark into the flight. Again, 
Upper stage cutoff is scheduled at the 24 minute 51 second mark into the flight, about five and a half minutes from now. After the cutoff of this main engine, as you said, uh, Rob, we will have a short ballistic phase, a short coasting phase that will, uh, when, when the upper stage will rely fully on its, at what we call the attitude and roll control system. And it will adjust its, its attitude so that during this so small ballistic phase, all the requirements from the telescope are fully met and that at the separation, when, when there will be the separation, the conditions will be very smooth and as requested for the telescope. The pilotage is calm, of the propulsion is nominal. Today's countdown uh, was as flawless as uh, you can imagine. Uh, the weather uh, was perfect uh, all the way through the early morning hours, uh, through the uh, fueling process of the vehicle. The weather's been a bit dicey here in Kourou over the past few days. But everything fell together on this Christmas day uh, to send uh, a new present to the world's astronomer. 20 minutes, 40 seconds into the flight. All parameters nominal as reported by Jean-Luc Voyer, the range operations manager. Four minutes of powered flight remaining. The upper stage uh, continues to function perfectly. It's been a uh, smooth ride for the James Webb Space Telescope. Trajectoire est nominale. That upper stage uh, was loaded uh, pre-flight uh, this morning with 15 tons of propellant for this long 16-minute burn, now about 30 seconds away from upper stage cutoff. And we're standing by for upper stage shutdown and uh, the cutoff of the uh, upper stage engine. Extinction OSC. Tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. The extinction of the, the shutoff of the, the cutoff of the engine was confirmed exactly as expected with the exactly expected altitude and speed and velocity. So now we are we have entered so the coasting phase, the ballistic phase, that will last for a little more than two minutes. And the telescope controllers uh, in Baltimore uh, confirming that uh, all of the uh, function uh, parameters for the James Webb Space Telescope have been loaded on board the telescope. Uh, we are expecting uh, Webb separation at the 27 minute 7 second mark here into the flight. Just over a minute from now, Springs will gently push Webb away from the upper stage of the Ariane 5. As it moves further and further away from uh, the upper stage, uh, there'll be what uh, we refer to as a collision avoidance maneuver. Yes, yes, Rob, exactly. The Springs already will give some distancing, of course, between the two objects, between the telescope and the upper stage. And then the upper stage will leave the trajectory of the telescope and makes a special maneuver to pass the telescope and heads towards a liberation orbit and leaves the telescope on its, on its uh, orbit uh, without any risk of collision and without any risk of pollution towards the telescope. And we're about uh, 17 seconds away from web separation. Monsieur 
séparation Web Space Telescope. Go Web We do have confirmation of observatory separation. The James Webb Space Telescope amidst applause here in the Mission Control Center now taking its first steps in pursuit of cosmological discovery. It was a perfect ride to orbit. And all of the uh, separation uh, sequence events are running in good fashion according to the telescope controllers. And there is the view uh, from the upper stage camera on the Ariane 5 looking at the James Webb Space Telescope as it moves uh, gently away from its launch vehicle. Ironically enough, as we marvel on uh, this view from the upper stage camera, this will be humanity's last view of the James Webb Tide Space Telescope as it moves to its work place about a million miles away from Earth. Yes, right, Rob. Impressive, fantastic pictures. Planetas brumosos y galaxias ultradifusas. El telescopio James Webb comienza a responder preguntas fantásticas. Desde hoy mismo, cualquier científico puede usar sus datos para estudiar el origen de todo. En 1659, Christian Huygens publicó su teoría de anillos acerca del origen del aspecto que Saturno presentaba a través de sus telescopios el más grande, los cuales alcanzó a tener un tamaño de lente de unos 20 centímetros de diámetro. El telescopio más grande jamás construido hasta la fecha, la joya española conocida como Gran Telescopio de Canarias, tiene un espejo segmentado de un diámetro de 10.4 metros. Solo contando la diferencia en tamaño, el GTC es cerca de 3.000 veces más sensible que los primeros telescopios construidos hace ya casi 400 años. Esta semana el James Webb Space Telescope ha empezado a proporcionar datos a todos los astrónomos del mundo. De hecho, cualquier persona puede bajarse sus datos desde hoy. JWST es unas 3.000 veces más sensible espectroscópicamente hablando, que cualquier telescopio jamás construido. Todavía operativo en la zona del infrarrojo medio. Un salto que nos costó cientos de años lo hemos hecho en 20. Asistimos a una revolución científica que comenzó a fraguarse en 1996 con una muy ambiciosa frase del entonces director de la NASA 
que tras la presentación de un muy reputado astrónomo sobre la posible construcción de un telescopio espacial de 4 metros que trabajara, en el, que trabajara en el infrarrojo, comentó ¿Por qué pides una cosa tan modesta? ¿Por qué no de 6 o 7 metros? El telescopio web quiere responder a unas pocas preguntas sencillas, básicas, quizás fantásticas, yo diría que llenas de trascendencia. ¿Cómo surgió el universo que conocemos lleno de estrellas, planetas y galaxias? ¿Cómo son los planetas de la Vía Láctea? ¿Cómo se crean y cómo evolucionan hasta quizás tener atmósferas y posiblemente ingredientes para albergar vida? ¿Qué papel juegan los agujeros negros sobre todos los supermasivos en el origen y evolución de nuestro universo? Algunas de las respuestas a estas preguntas las vamos a empezar a encontrar en los primeros datos del WJST, liberados el 11 y 12 de julio y que se han presentado por todo lo alto. Primero fueron el presidente estadounidense John Biden y la vicepresidenta Kamala Harris los que adelantaron, con cierto retraso, asuntos más terrenales se cruzaron en la agenda, la imagen más profunda del universo jamás tomada y la adornaron con reflexiones sobre la colaboración entre naciones, el beneficio de la humanidad a través del conocimiento y la tecnología, y las posibilidades ilimitadas del espíritu emprendedor y explorador de los humanos. Fue una gran muestra del apoyo gubernamental a la ciencia en Estados Unidos que deberíamos todos aprender. Posteriormente, en una rueda de prensa de la NASA, la ESA y la CSA, siglas de la Agencia del Espacio Estadounidense, Europea y Canadiense respectivamente, presentaron muchos más datos de todo lo que puede hacer el James Webb Telescopy. En la tarea imposible de contestar esas preguntas, las que sin embargo nos permitirán acercarnos más a entender el cosmos y nuestro lugar en él, querría detenerme a cada, en cada una de esas imágenes brevemente. Cada una dará para meses de análisis y decenas de artículos científicos pero es casi un delirio poner solo dos o tres frases de cada conjunto de datos presentados estos días, así que me centraré en dos temas que cubren el principio y el final de la evolución del lugar donde vivimos, el universo. Un planeta nuboso. Nunca antes se había tomado un espectro de esa calidad de un exoplaneta desde el espacio y el honor se lo lleva el conocido como WASP-97b. B porque es el primer planeta descubierto en torno a la estrella WASP-96. No es una estrella muy diferente al Sol, solo algo más fría. 5200 grados centígrados frente a los 5500 grados centígrados que tiene nuestro Sol. Este lejano mundo es un planeta de una masa aproximadamente la mitad de Júpiter, pero más grande, que da una vuelta en torno a su estrella cada tres días comparados con los 12 años que tarda Júpiter. En 2021 se descubrió agua en su atmósfera, entendida como la parte más externa de su estructura, porque en principio no debería tener una superficie sólida, sino ser un gran gigante gaseoso. Más tarde se descubrió sodio emitiendo de manera parecida a las luces naranjas de las farolas, observaciones que nos indicaron que probablemente no tiene nubes. Sin embargo, he aquí la primera sorpresa proporcionada por el James Webb. El planeta tiene nubes, brumas y no muy diferentes a las de la Tierra. Son de agua. La caracterización de atmósferas de planetas más allá de nuestro sistema solar será coser y cantar para el James Webb. Queda demostrado y eso nos acercará a conocer cómo deben evolucionar para dar lugar a los ingredientes de la vida, que muchos pensamos que no pueden haber surgido solo aquí. Planetas con atmósferas y quizás vida es el destino final, hasta hoy, del universo. Por el camino ha habido nacimiento y muerte de estrellas, quizás también con sus planetas. Otros dos temas de los que James Webb ya nos ha mostrado que puede hacer, pero quiero cerrar el, el artículo con el otro extremo de la vida del universo, la formación de las primeras estrellas en las primeras galaxias que me toca más de cerca en mi trabajo diario. James Webb nos ha enseñado 
como un manual de cómo funciona el universo, de la física que rige el cosmos. Es única pero espectacular imagen de una zona del cielo donde hay un cúmulo de galaxias llamado SMAX 0723. Vemos otras galaxias tan lejanas que el universo solo tenía un 4% de su edad actual cuando emitieron la luz que estas semanas ha recogido el James Webb. Y en el conjunto de varios miles de galaxias que se ven en esa imagen hay bichos de todos los colores y naturalezas. Galaxias lejanas, rojas, con gran cantidad de polvo y formando estrellas. Mil veces más rápido que cualquier galaxia que tenemos hoy cerca. Galaxias también rojas, pero ya agotadas de formar estrellas en una época temprana y que pasarán el 50% o más de la vida del universo envejeciendo irremediablemente, sin ver estrellas nuevas formándose de nuevo en ellas. Galaxias cuya imagen está terriblemente distorsionada por el efecto del lente gravi gravitacional que provoca el cúmulo SMAX 723, o galaxias ultradifusas muchísimos menos densas que la Vía Láctea, lo cual puede llevar asociado un origen muy diferente y de las que solo conocemos un puñado cerca de nosotros, y sin embargo se ven perfectamente en esta imagen del James Webb. En la imagen del primer campo profundo del James Webb, incluso se puede aprender sobre cómo era el universo antes de que existieran las galaxias, porque lo que llena esa imagen y no ve directamente James Webb, pero sí detectará gracias a las capacidades espectroscópicas únicas, es materia oscura, que es varias veces más abundante en el universo que la materia que tenemos alrededor en nuestros cuerpos, en los planetas o en las estrellas. El trabajo que rutinariamente se, se hacía detectando candidatas a galaxias distantes con el Hubble y luego se observaban con muchas dificultades, bajas tasas de éxito y esfuerzos de meses, si no de años, con telescopios gigantes desde la Tierra como el GTC, a partir de ahora el James Webb lo hará en cuestión de semanas. Nunca antes ha habido un espectógrafo tan potente en el espacio. Y ese espectógrafo seguro que nos ayudará a comprender la naturaleza de la materia que domina la masa del universo, que no vemos y que dominó y domina su evolución desde mucho antes de que existieran las estrellas. A algunos las imágenes de estos días nos parecen tremendamente bellas. Por algo nos dedicamos a ello. A otros les parecen espectaculares el vértigo de saber que se está mirando la inmensidad del cosmos que nunca visitaremos, sin duda excita de alguna manera a nuestros cerebros y lanza nuestra curiosidad e imaginación para intentar comprender. Otros preguntan, ¿de qué nos sirve estudiar el universo? Pregunta lícita como todas. Quizás lo más probable, nuestras vidas y el cosmos no tienen un sentido, pero el hecho es que pasan. Cada uno tiene su historia y a los humanos nos encanta contar y escuchar historias que perduran más allá de nuestra existencia. Quizás si sí existe un sentido, el hecho entonces sería que el universo ha acabado hasta hoy dando lugar a la vida en la Tierra, o quizás en algún otro sitio y en algún otro tiempo. De nuevo, la historia del cosmos nos ayudará a relativizar, entender y trascender nuestro tiempo limitado y nuestra existencia efímera, al menos esa es mi ilusión. Pablo Pérez González, investigador del Centro de Astrobiología, dependiente del Consejo Superior de Investigación Científica y del Instituto Nacional de Técnica Aeroespacial. Gracias Pablo por esta reseña tan hermosa sobre el Web James Webb Te Telescopy. Y ahora amigos, les dejo con justamente el proceso de lanzamiento del cohete que llevó al espacio este formidable telescopio. Disfrútalo. Si te gusta el vídeo, compártelo, divúlgalo. Deja tu like, tu poderoso like. Hasta la próxima, mis amigos.